So here's just people burying AEW. So here's Triple H talking with Logan Paul on the Impulsive Co- podcast. Now this is this isn't directly this isn't directly at AEW, but it is. Triple H talks about the recent use of blood and non PG language. Oh, hold on, hold on. Listen, you might as well say that because the YouTube comment section is just going to go <laughs> clickbait. God damn it. If that so, he mentions how it's more shocking and powerful when it's done in moderation. So let's listen to this. In that year, before the Netflix yeah. pivot, no, you know, in in a in a movie, um, I, I would rather watch a movie that has incredible drama and an incredible build to one gunshot than watch a movie <laughs> with a, just hundreds of people firing me there's some movies like you watch the departed like you don't even see sorry i guess spoiler if you haven't seen the departed in the last 20 years or whatever but you know there's some movies where you don't even see the the violence you don't even see the person get shot and it's more impactful that way you know so machine guns and no one's getting shot and or whatever and there's no like i'd rather build and get to the scene in the movie where the one shot happens and you're like oh my god can you believe he fucking shot him and like holy shit that's unbelievable um there's been times when as at we as a company say we're pg and we've been g like way g rated um i believe there's a time for things to work there's a time for everything um and it but it's got to be done in moderation it's got to be done when it's right, um, because if if you don't, if you if everything you say is just cussing, who cares? So without playing more of, we don't need to play the whole three minutes. <clears throat> what is Triple H saying, Hairline? What we say on the show all the time: less is more. And if you do it all right. the time, who gives a shit? Right. So if Mox is bleeding every two minutes, who gives a shit? If there's a tournament every two months, who gives a shit? If there, you're saying fuck every four minutes, who gives a shit? Very simple, what he's saying. So that's obviously AEW that pertains to that. <clears throat> now here's Triple H. Pardon me, that's Rhea Ripley. Here's Triple H burying <clears throat> AEW and people who ran from the grind, as he puts it, um, Let's on the Pat McAfee show. Let's listen to this clip. It's a different game. It's a different world. If they're not here... So he's talking about people signing to WWE and the and the rumors of or not the rumors but the talk of oh he fumbled free agents or whatever. This is this is Triple H's response. It's a different game. It's a different world. If they're not here to be all in on this, like when I see people that come out of you know trying to make it and then they pick the job where they go well they work less the schedule's lighter i oh, like all right then i'm glad i didn't get you okay. because if, if you're not in it for the grind at that at that point early in your career you don't, you have no business being here okay so boom oh my oh. god dude osprey not talking about you but talking about you like that's crazy deflated fucking deflated bro he's just like yo you don't you know like if you don't want to put that work in i'm glad i didn't get you you know what i mean like if you just want the easier job and then people are trying to spin it oh yeah what because osprey doesn't want to work bullshit shows in utah it's like bro they just ran a show in quebec city yeah he must have people there like bullshit shows in front of half the fucking demo yeah one third the fucking demo like just just nuts man so um so then here's Rhea Ripley basically saying more of the same over there but like real talk why do you just if you were to he'd be gone forever we'd never have to see him again he would literally not pick up he'd probably be at that other place yeah in front of like 600 people yeah. like why why can't we do why, why you're the only you know why don't we Dumb? yeah why don't we Dumb's the guy. Not what? Oh, oh, whoa, 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 easy. Mommy. People say Rey Mysterio is the guy. Hell nah. Dominic Mysterio, the other one. Okay. The better one. Over there, but like. And then like how he said, sorry about that. And then he's like, uh, oh, 600 oh, people. Good. That shit's fucking hilarious, man. Um, At that other place in front of 600 people. Like, come on. Shots fired, hey? Um, So... 
now we have and then so why, why? AEW. Sorry guys, I'm sick today. This ain't the most flowy show. So then we have more like, like we're doing it for you. Yeah, it's for the people, man. It's for the people. For the people. I did it for the rock. The P W P universe. <laughs> so then we have even more. Um so then that's Rhea Ripley getting at them. And then here's Jade Cargill fucking burying AEW on Busted Open Radio, speaking to LaGreca, that fucking Mark. Sorry, I'm sick, dude. We're starting wars with fucking... Uh, hold on, hold on. Before you hit play, um, the past couple mornings, I've been trying to listen to some Busted Open Radio clips and just fucking... I always turn them off halfway through because LaGreca's just the most cringe fucking Mark of all time. It's like, it's oh, like I want to hear Bully's take. Yeah, and it's like he's working, but it's like, no, it's not work like, oh, he gets heat with the listeners, and that's why... It's it's like go away heat with me, you know. It's like, right. bro, no, you're not disheveled. Not Your bro. hair's not really messed up, and you didn't actually have a sleepless night, and you're not actually wearing your bathrobe, and you're not actually doing that. And I get it. Oh, working oh. the gimmick, like hairline works the gimmick on the show all the time. I get it. I work the gimmick too, but it's just hairline way more than me. But it's just it's just how dare you? It's you work the gimmick way more than I do on the show. What are you talking about? No, this is just who I am, bro. Yeah, bro. No, it's why it's the perfect balance. I'm the straight guy. You're the fucking. <laughs> you're Jesse why Ventura. You blowing <laughs> I'm blowing oh, up yeah. your side. <laughs> <laughs> the Gulf of Tonkin. Jade, um, I'm going to just be completely honest here. I feel like the other company you work for dropped the ball with you. Um, you know, I think a lot of people saw you, saw the presence, the charisma, the star power. Why isn't she at top? Yeah. Well, did that factor in at all in the decision for you to come to the WWE? Um, it was a couple of decisions that made me come to WWE. Um, I mean, other than the fact that the machine is ridiculous over here, the connections, the the history, the legacy, it's it's one of one, you know. Um, AEW was a new company. Obviously, they're still figuring things out. Um, but that happens in every company, right? They're still figuring things out. Oh no, they're a challenger brand. You have to figure things out, what's good and what's bad. Um, I'm 31. I don't have time to really grow with the company at my age. I have to be in a, um, in a established company, and I have to go over there and, and let that be known because you can't do this forever. And as a woman, especially in your, your 30s, women are um, – the majority of the, the fan base is like, okay, well, it's time for her to like go out by her way. What's next for her? Okay, at least she's self-aware about that too and not using it as a trigger. Like she's like saying that's just she's just being realistic because most people be like, oh, the patriarchy, they hate women aging, ageist. Right. Well, it's well, like, no, you have to be realistic, bro. Like we're, you know. And, and it sounds like most of all, she's willing to grow and like, you know, perfect her craft. Yeah. And and let's be real, people want to see, regardless if they're good or not, they want to see that twenty something year old t twenty something year old on TV rather than that thirty something year old woman on TV. So t time is not on my side, and I knew I had to make a um uh the best decision for me, but not just for me, my family. Time's not on my side. I mean, they had me for two or three years, and I went sixty fucking five and zero. Oh, but uh, I don't know. They couldn't they couldn't figure it out. I'm thirty one. They. AEW got me when I was like 27 or 28 and they couldn't figure it the fuck out. And I was undefeated and made my debut with Shaq. And then Cody left and they couldn't figure it out. And uh, yeah, I don't have time to fuck around is how I took that. You know, like, let's be honest. Cause when she goes, I'm 31, I need to go now. It's like, yeah. So that means four years ago when AEW got her or whatever, three and a half years, right? Like how old was she then? You know, so she's like 27 when they got their hands on her and they didn't do shit with her. You know, it's right. crazy. It, it, it's it's, it's mind boggling. Dude. It's mind bog boggling, dude. Um, It gets no better than yeah. this. I mean, the front office is the front office. And I, I think that's the best way to sum up uh, what it is, you yeah. know, Um, and I trust the process. You know, I'd have a WrestleMania match. Um, And uh, again, the front office is the front office. Yeah, I don't know. She's just down to work and work hard. That's what it seems like to me. Yeah, Jay, no, yeah for sure. So Same then, vibes. so then, lastly, we got Brandy Rhodes. Um, uh oh, she buries. She responded to the, the shit Cody said. Yeah, so she buries AEW. She goes, "What I feared with that company, AEW, 
I was seeing before my eyes. When you start to see things drift from, so she's saying what I feared would happen with AEW, I started to see it before my eyes. That's oh. what I've been saying. Cody went there. He thought he was going to recreate the territories with his dad. You know what I mean? He thought he was going to recreate like AWA or, and all that type of shit, early NWA stuff. Nah, nah. Nah, nah. Right? It just became a mark, clicky. Cody Rhodes got out of the clicky, politicky, weird fucking environment. Starts AW, it becomes a clicky, weird goofball environment. I knew it. Anyways, so Brandy says, what I feared with that company, I saw before my eyes. When you start to see things drift from the original vision, and I've seen this happen before, then you start to think this may not be what you thought it was, what we thought it was. <clears throat> which is basically why Cody left AEW. Like it, it, this just confirms what everybody said. Cody's never said it. He's like, no, it's just, you know, it was time. It was, he just always beats around the bush, but she just confirmed right. what we've been saying. It's that Cody went there. And there's a reason we're saying this folks. We've been saying it. Cody went there. <clears throat> it's not what he thought it would be. And Right. He fucking left. Right. Yeah. And it's like what Punk said. He, he was fed something that, you know, sold a bill of goods. We him. were all sold a bill right. of goods. It just turned right. out to be the Bucks's playground. Unfortunate. With with their friends. Yeah, man. It's unfortunate. And now AEW suffering because of it. Um so yeah, just shout out Brandy, I guess. Another little burial of AEW. Sorry, AEW, we had to do it. 